Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see so many of you here to listen to the Attorney General. <laughs> I, um, it, it, uh, it shows what a respect our party has for the rule of law. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've been asked to come as the newest member of the Cabinet to tell you a little bit about why it was that I joined the Cabinet, which seems a strange thing to ask someone to speak about, because if you're asked to do a job for your country, I don't think you should refuse the request, do you? No. <laughs> At 11 p.m., on the 29th of March, 2019, we will leave the European Union. <laughs> and soon thereafter, in an extraordinary moment in our history, the EU institutions will no longer have the right to make laws for our country. And that power will belong exclusively to the sovereign parliament of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a precious prize. Like millions of others, I voted to leave the European Union, not because I didn't wish to continue our special and close friendship and collaboration with our friends there, but because the political and democratic price of ever closer union was just too high. I was 15, true, <laughs> I was once 15, I was 15 at the time of the first referendum. My generation did not get to vote. We waited 41 years to do so, and now some want another referendum after two. And the Labour Party are poised, waiting to see which way the wind blows. <laughs> but this government and this Prime Minister will not be deflected from the solemn obligation that is imposed upon a government when 544 members of parliament voted to devolve the decision to leave to the British people. And once they had given their decision, 498 members of parliament voted to give notice under Article 50 of our intention to do so. She will deliver the prize that millions voted for and fulfill the largest democratic mandate that any vote has ever returned in our history. And that is why, that is why I accepted her request to join this government as its Attorney General. 
because it will take a dogged, determined, single-minded clarity and firmness of purpose to translate that decision into reality. And it was clear to me then, and even more so now, that the Prime Minister will not flinch from her duty and the central mission that the people of this country have set us to take control of our borders, as Sajid Javid has announced, to resume full sovereign rights over our laws, as we will assuredly do under our proposals, to cease the obligation to support the future budgets of the EU by huge annual payments. But in the real world, in the real world, nothing so valuable is ever gained without sacrifice and compromise. And as Dominic Grab, in his excellent speech here, said in a negotiation, pragmatism is inevitable and necessary. Since the 17th century, the special genius of the British peoples has been the flexibility to find compromises and constitutional arrangements that may not possess ideological or theoretical purity, but which work. And we have asked, we have asked that the European Union commit to that same flexibility to preserve the economic benefits of smooth and fluent trade across our borders while doing justice to the desire of the British people for self-government and to maintain both the integrity of the United Kingdom and of the EU legal order. We know that on both sides, there are men and women who possess the vision and the goodwill to see how essential it is that acceptable arrangements are found. You know, as a lawyer, I have negotiated many agreements over the years. And as Dominic said, I know that the nature of a negotiation is, with apologies to the Rolling Stones, that you can't always get what you want. <laughs> but we, But we have to be grown up about it. And we have now reached the critical moment when I am convinced we must resolve to put aside our differences and unite behind the Prime Minister to ensure that the decision of the 23rd ensure that the decision of the 23rd of June 2016 is not set at naught by those who would have us remain in the European Union. That would indeed have catastrophic consequences for the democracy of our country. We here who argue that this great democratic mandate must be given effect, are the optimists. The whole premise and principle of Brexit is based on hope, not fear. We need not fear. We need not fear self-government. We believe that a nation like the United Kingdom will soon be able to gather her strength and in close and amicable association with her friends, step out again into the world as a free, 
independent and sovereign partner to the other democracies. <laughs> to build a future of opportunity, the seeds of which have been sown here this week for all the generations of her people. 300,000 homes a year by the mid-2020s, giving the opportunity of home ownership to the young. An education system that encourages aspiration and the skills to achieve it. Already delivering for the nearly two million more children who are now in good or outstanding schools and an economy that rewards hard work and enterprise, helping businesses to cut employment to the lowest levels we have seen since the 1970s, giving the security of a regular wage to over 3.3 more million people in work. And so, let us say with Milton, methinks I see in my mind a noble and puissant nation, rousing herself like a strong man after sleep and shaking her invincible locks. <laughs> methinks I see her as an eagle mewing her mighty youth and kindling her undazzled eyes at the full midday beam. Ladies and gentlemen, let us seize that prize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.